Hey, and welcome back to this part six of this uh, deep dive into the costumes of the Wheel of Time TV show. This has been such a, oh, this was such a fascinating conversation, and I really enjoyed putting these videos together. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Thinking about the costumes in this way and all of the, the clues and details that the, the creators of the show put in in the costumes, it, it's amazing. This conversation, we are talking about the costumes, uh, part two of the costumes worn by Moraine. Also, we're talking about Tam and the costumes worn by the Watcher of the Seals, the Flame of Tarvalon, the Amelin Seat herself, Swan Sanche. And uh, in this video, spoilers, ooh, I think I forgot to mention book spoilers in the last video. Mm. Uh, sorry, just remembering that now. Um, I believe like detailed spoilers in this video will go through to book six, but that's a bit fuzzy because we do, like, we are full book spoilers in the conversation, but I think in this video, it is mostly through to book six, but I'm just going to say, beware if you haven't finished the video or finished the series, there may be vague things mentioned that allude to things that happen later on in the books, uh, but yes, so uh, without further ado, I guess let's, uh, let's dive into the costumes. Let's be nerdy with Let's be nerdy, let's be nerdy. Let's be nerdy, bitch. Let's be nerdy, bitch. Let's be nerdy, let's be nerdy, bitch. I also love how unsubtle her ring is, and she flashes that thing mm -hmm. all the time. She she does it when she's adjusting um, her hood as she comes into the inn. Like, she's yeah. not being subtle with this ring. <laughs> no, the the ring to me was one of the smartest choices that the the show made, just as far as visual style. Because I I had made a video ages ago where I said I didn't think they could do the eyes to eye face because some people will say the eyes to eye face is Botox. We are so used to even if it was, I don't know if that's what Jordan was thinking. We are yeah. used to Botox now that it would not look weird. We need I mean, something. Air Age of Spaces is basically airbrushing and we do that to everyone anyway, so we wouldn't notice. We wouldn't notice it. And in the exactly. show, or in the books, they can spot an Aes Sedai on site. The only, like, unless they make every Aes Sedai an uncanny valley type face, which would be horrifying to watch. Like, it would be just, mm. it would be unsettling. They needed something that people could spot on site to make it like the books. And it's such a smart choice. I'm just gonna say... When I got online into fandom and saw what other people thought the I said I ring looked like, I was very disappointed <laughs> because I am, because the way they talk about it in the books and the way they flash it, yeah, I mean, people were seeing it from across rooms. And I don't yeah. know if you've ever tried to identify somebody's jewelry from across, from across the, the room. room. So no. in my imagination, the snake's body went around like the finger, but then it was like curled on top of the hand or something. So it was like a class ring. It was ah. significant. So when I saw the thing, I was like, yes, this is what it's supposed to look like. All these little tiny gold rings. Someone who's like standing, I mean, look at this. We are trying to look at their jewelry, mm -hmm. parents ring in like from like a foot away in these pictures and we can't figure out what it is. Yeah. How were people clocking these rings across rooms if they were just tiny little gold cylinders? I mean, exactly. clocking it across the room, you're talking about a ring pop. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's, yeah. Yeah, and now I want eyes to die ring pops. I mean, that's basically what they are. And, and <laughs> someone is bringing me one next month that they 3D printed for me. Excellent. So, so I'm going to be backhanding people with that thing. <laughs> As you should. I love this dress too. It's just super buttoned up and formal. And it has some stylistic callbacks to the 1500s. And yet it's very modern at the same time. Mm. And I just like that it feels very old and new at the same time because that's to me the essence of the eyes today is there anything in this like in the way that i because i just find that interesting the design here i don't know what to yeah call it. it's um it's a hip roll and okay. we see them the most in historical garments from if you're familiar with english history you're going to think of it as tudor or elizabethan mm -hmm. um it's the elizabethan hip roll shape and that's oh, where okay. we get that from so you see it a lot in Shakespeare um because of the era um but it would also be classical French classical Spanish that all kind of comes in at the same time and it's a very structured thing to hold your skirt out away from your body which makes the fact that it isn't holding the skirt really interesting to me just from a technical standpoint uh -huh. 
Yeah, because yeah, the skirt's underneath it. What I was looking, yeah. I was looking. It's like it, it's a an eighties bathing suit cut with a loincloth in front of it. <laughs> Can you look at it from <laughs> like, the back though? Because from the back, it's, it's all one thing. Yes, which is like yeah. the most interesting part to me. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of see how it comes together with a center back closure. I'm I'm sure it's a zipper. Um, mm. and I know we've had discussions <laughs> elsewhere about <laughs> zippers in the world of the Wheel of Time, but it's it's a two piece. The skirt is under the the jacket or bodice, mm. whatever mm. you want to call it. But with the Elizabethan hip roll piece, that it's actually a separate piece. It it kind of looks a little bit like sausages tied together and you tie them around your waist and then your skirt goes over them and it helps flare the skirt out ah. um at least the ones that I've put people in Th there's different ways that people make different things all and you know we all have sad little fights about what's historically accurate and what isn't <laughs> I, I just love this dress it's so different visually from so many of the other things and it's very different from what we see Moraine traveling in this is mm -hmm. not business like at all I mean it is but it's a very different kind of business she's not wearing yeah. pants this isn't sensible she's not gonna fight a trollic in this she's got business with her girlfriend <laughs> there was a point where you uh called out the darts in yeah. the sleeves can I can you see it here a yeah. little bit. So that seemed to me, I don't know for certain that this is what this is, but I've had to change the seams in people's sleeves so that they could move their arms to actually do what they were blocking mm -hmm. in all of their acting. Yeah. <laughs> I think you have a shot of what she has to do with her arms here. <laughs> yes. I, I, yeah. I, she has to like put her arms out and bow. And like, this is, this is, it just was an interesting thing to me to know to be like, yeah, that's right. Cause she, the dress does not look like it's structured for putting your arms you know, waving them around yeah. like you just don't care. I, I think that was probably Bowing down they to had mom. to add. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you could probably see that here very well. Yeah, yeah, that triangular mm -hmm. piece. That's that's not a normal sleeve thing. Mm -hmm. And it may have just been done for visual interest, but I, I suspect it's more of a practicality thing um, yeah. just from having had to put them in other people's stuff. Right. You also called out something that I didn't notice either. You asked, did she borrow Land's pants? <laughs> <laughs> it does look a bit like. <laughs> and it may not be Land's. It may be that she borrowed somebody's pants there in the city um, that they're in because it could be something like that. We haven't seen many of them in a state of undress. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's possible it could be that, but it's definitely not the pants that she's been wearing up until this point. No, they're so loose. Like this, I think this is the first so... time I noticed her clutch too. Yeah. That's her yeah. road trip bag with snacks for mm. Rand. <laughs> yes, there it is. She's got a granola bar in there. <laughs> you won't like him when he's hangry. He just <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah, she did steal somebody's pants. I she like did. them. I like those pants. I love they, the they're... pants, but I'm creeped out by them because like when I go out and clean my garage and there's dead bugs and stuff out there, I'm wearing leggings because I don't want anything going up inside the pants. <laughs> yeah. and you're just walking through the blight in it. Yeah, yes. that's a good point. Never mind. I retracted. <laughs> I no longer like these pants. They would be good for, like... I like them. Yes. They'd be very comfortable for sleeping. Perhaps yeah. not for not for walking through haunted a, woods yeah haunted wood where there's like a stick bug that will digest you from the inside and mushroom boy okay i don't have the full shot i in the like the initial release shot that all of this was in like mm -hmm. you know all of them were side by side hopefully i will find it and put it up here the thing i remember noticing because matt i was on the, the dusty wheel with matt hatch and he was obsessed with boots and uh, Lance, or sorry, Moraine's jacket and coat cloak were longer than everybody else's, and yes. they were dirt. They were dirty at the bottom, and I just thought, oh, she's used to living in the city. <laughs> so yeah, nobody to... else had hems dragging in the dirt. They were smarter <laughs> than that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Although I do love the way that this piece looks when she is spinning um, mm. the power in the village mm -hmm. to fight the yes. trollocs. It looks so cool and. So that's totally why she chose to wear it like this she wants to look cool <laughs> i that yes my goodness if i could like weave things i would have flowy things on all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean you'd uh, think that would be a better enticement to kids than like broken rat backs or whatever but 
You know, they still don't like her. So what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Is Moraine wearing something over? So I can't I really tell. I think it's the same piece, but she can drape it in different ways. And so ah. it looks more closed depending on yeah. how she wears it. They're definitely adding mm-hmm. things for the Reds and for Alana. Yeah. Um, we did actually um, go and look. These are the candles. They look like glass, but they're not. They're sewn together. Um, oh. I zoomed really in. It looks like it's like some sort of very thin hide or parchment or skin or something. Yeah. Okay. I remember a bunch of people were complaining like, oh, they just have a bunch of morning candles with them. Um, and they have like little <laughs> sew marks on the sides if you catch them right. Oh, um, probably vellum would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So they were like constructed out of, you know, something they had on hand. Yeah. yeah. That's super cool. I've that I've honestly cool. wondered were these actually meant to be a part of their costume or did they just have to throw something together when it started snowing? <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah, cuz it snowed yes. during the scene. Yeah, they weren't planning that. But I I don't know, it worked for the scene though, for sure. It, it so works. It's mm-hmm. a gorgeous scene. It is. Tam, I only have a few shots of him, but you uh, pulled some stuff out about his costume. Oh, right go away. to the next one, the next shot. Um, I remember this was something where you you mentioned that he looked like he was wearing something that somebody would wear under armor. Yeah, so they would wear these padded garments under armor for, um, well, for fighting. Mm-hmm. And that's what this reminded me of was one of those padded pieces that goes under armor. And so I was like, so Tam isn't really a farmer, right? He's some sort of soldier or something. Yeah, she said this this like 30 seconds before the door pops open. Right, right. And I think you you even were saying, like, did you say at some point his clothing was reminding you of Lan's? Yeah, he looked more like Lan than he did the other men in the Two Rivers. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not a really perfect analogy, but he looks more like Lan than anybody in the two yes. rivers. Mm-hmm. There's a dangerous thing going on with Tam. And then, you know, you find out that there's a reason for that. Also, hi, Narg. Hey. <laughs> we barely knew you. We barely knew you. Thank you, you for not the... talking. <laughs> oh, God, yes. You want to talk about the Trollocs loincloths? No, oh, I God, don't. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> The implications of the fact that they are actually wearing loincloths is disturbing. Ooh. <laughs> so, Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. We might uh, need to puffer puff, 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 puff fish. <laughs> yes. Swan! Okay. Uh, Swan. Oh. oh, gosh. This costume is so good. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, okay. I don't know even know where to begin because everything I didn't <laughs> notice the the seven colors in the stole until it was pointed out because they're so muted. They're really um, subtle. Yeah, I, I think you you talked about the pat. That's why I think I got a side image. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's a phoenix image I in was just about the shoulder say. piece, and the hair piece also reminds me of the phoenix crowns. I, I'm sure that's not the actual proper name for them, but that's the name I learned. Um, the crowns that were worn by the Chinese empresses were oh. called phoenix crowns, at least according to what I was taught. And they wore phoenixes where the emperors were dragons. Okay. Because the phoenix and the dragon, I guess, like they have very specific yeah. roles in, in that particular mythology. Um, it's not something I know a lot about, but it just made me think, oh, okay, so she's the female counterpart to the dragon. She's the phoenix as the mm-hmm. flame of Tar Valon and Rand's dragon. <laughs> right. And right. that may not be what they're going for, but that might be what they're going for. It could also just be fire. Phoenixes are made of fire, so it could yeah. just be fire. It also I could mean, be like phoenix rise from the ashes. She is, uh, spoilers in the books, she is stilled and then restored. Right. So the Phoenix imagery makes sense for the character, even if it's not meant for Tarvalon. Right. I like the idea of the Amarlin, though, because as we know, Egwene is going to become the Mm -hmm. Amarlin. And she and Rand are very much, and they've set this up in the show so much, I cannot imagine they're not going to go all in because they've even foreshadowed it with that episode eight cold open with Luz Theron Mm -hmm. and Latra, you know, and yes. the confrontation over this, I feel like that's going to be come back with like Wayne and Rand. Absolutely. Um, 
And this costume also looks like a description of something that Egwene wears as the Amerlin um, in the dream when she's fighting all the people in the tower in the dream. Oh, I see. You, I'm going to break your heart, Pez. I ignore costume descriptions. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're just so long. Yeah, Pez <laughs> like, did kind of post that, I remember. She posted, like, something about a golden gown fit for an armor, armor, Amerlin. Yeah, I can't talk anymore. Oh. So <laughs> and I think other words. people had said something similar, too. I, I don't think I was the first one to catch that by any means, but I just love this costume. It's so oh, cool. It is beautiful. This like this better show up at conventions. Like this oh is, yeah. God. Oh, it, also, I, I want to oh. talk about power shoulders. She and yeah. Marine have the power shoulders. They really yeah. do. Oh gosh, yeah. Their silhouettes also mirror. It. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is so cool. Marine also the has the high neckline mm-hmm. and the power shoulders. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sophia it's just it such a cool costume it's so visually different from so many other things and yes you look at it and you know she is in charge and means business and I love that Leanne's corresponding costume is pants yeah <laughs> I didn't know her pants until somebody pointed it out I was oh my god she has pants I love the amount of women in pants in the show yes. <laughs> Tarvalon so power trousers <laughs> yes yes was this the earring? Because I think that's why I took this screenshot. Was this the earring where you were saying it might be a phoenix egg? Or was it in a different scene? Yeah, I think it's these earrings. Because um, okay. they kind of tie into the whole hairpiece thing as right, well. the whole phoenix theme. Happening. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. It may not the- be, but I want it to be. <laughs> yeah. And like, I also I- love, I believe, that the reason that neckline is showing off her tattoo Mm-hmm. is specifically because we've just had this cold open with this little baby with the tattoo so that is to immediately tell yeah, that us. this is her but it also yeah. means that swan is ruling from the most powerful seat in the land mm-hmm. forcing everyone to look at the the symbols of her being born in a country where it's illegal to channel yes, yes. and i do like this might diverge a bit from our main topic because and uh, Things can be more than one thing because I think it is all of those things. What struck me about it is they had, I bet you it was part of the conversation is we're going to show a young black girl. Everybody's going to think it's naive. We have to make sure, find a way to have them not yeah, know that it's naive. No. Yeah. And totally. that made me so happy because it was like, there are so many diverse, like th- this cast is so diverse that you can't just go, oh, the black person is the, this one only other black person in the show. I did see people thinking that it was going to be baby naive, even though it was like clearly, yeah, <laughs> clearly not. Clearly mm-hmm. not because naive does not have these tattoos. But I love that. Like, I love that. Like, I bet you that was, I, I can, in my mind, and it could be completely wrong, <laughs> but no, in my I mind, I, right. can, I can see that as part of the discussion is, oh dear, when we do the flashback, we need a way to distinguish her. I don't know. Let's give her tattoos. And then this whole mythology growing from that of like the idea of, oh, tattoos can be a part of Tyrant culture. They can be a symbol of like, and it just becoming a thing that just. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. And she's continued as you see in she's the shot, more. she's continued yeah. to get more. And so I really hope that at some point we get to know what those, because I, that's one of my things. I love the idea of like storytelling and record keeping yeah. through through tattoos i think yeah. that that is and sarah and i love that hers are them. just front and center she's not hiding yeah. them yeah she's not, not getting clothing all. that that shows it's it's like the same way that she still says her fish stuff because that yes. is her dad they've turned uh, the fish stuff i love her them. keeping her father alive you and with her broke me with that i don't know now it's so sad when i read the books she's just missing her daddy and honestly, I guarantee you that that tattoo conversation pretty much happened the way you described it, because that is a consideration. You have to establish visual continuity and you're not going to dress the little Fisher girl in gold and flames. So mm-hmm. you have to have something else. It either has to be the hair or the tattoos. And they went with the tattoos. Yeah. Although I, love, I love her hair too. Little baby yeah. Swan's hair is so good. While we're talking about Baby Swan, you said some interesting stuff about her uh, clothing, like that it looks like she's wearing things that she can put on herself, which is yes. unusual for a child of her age. Okay, I don't know. I'm, I'm quoting you, so I'll <laughs> let you talk. <laughs> um, a lot of times you would see children, um, especially in historical fiction, children tend to be dressed exactly like adults. The, the concept of children's clothing is actually fairly new in our world, in our history. Mm-hmm. 
we dressed children as miniature adults until very, very, very recently in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And here's Swan in things that she can wear without her dad needing to help her. She doesn't have, you know, fancy little sussy hair ribbons and things like that, that her dad has to have two hands to do. Mm -hmm. She is wearing things that she can do independently, both because she is very independent and because she's taking care of her father with the choices that she is making. At least that's how I'm interpreting it. Right, right. That is cool. Okay, uh, how about this outfit? Anything in here? I love it. (laughs) I know that's not really very helpful, but I love it. No, I I love that it all is very homespun in its, Mm -hmm. its look and its appearance. And it's actually got a very similar texture the the little shrug piece she's wearing to the vest that her father wears. Oh. And so you can see some continuity there between them. Um, they both have similarly distressed clothing as well. These are things that they wear to work in, but they're also probably being laundered by the child. And so there's not a lot of, you know, starchy ironing, <laughs> things of that <laughs> nature, which also fits the characters and the location in the world and the history and the inspiration of the the places that informed the costume design. But they just look like they belong together and they yeah. look very comfortable and cool and easy to work in. Mm-hmm. And it's so different from what we see her in. And yet there are some things that are similar, especially the tattoos and the framing of them. And so you can get yeah. that kind of visual through line, even though her circumstances have changed dramatically. Yes. I will also say just the color, they, they, they look like they belong here. Like they yes. look like they belong in this environment. Like, yes. Yeah. I love it. It is, it is great. And then, <sighs> okay, how about this? this outfit this I love this dress so much she's trying so hard Mm -hmm. to impress those girls and (laughs) yeah unfortunately for her one of them is tiny (laughs) (laughs) yes that is so true it's it's the come meet the president of the college oh you're Mm -hmm. one of those students dress yes (laughs) I like that she's still like you know I mean this feels looks comfortable I feel like Mm -hmm. Swan does not like being uncomfortable so it still looks fancy but like yeah, my thought when I had, like, I mean, it took me a while to articulate what it was that this dress was making me think. It was that this is a dress that is formal and designed in a world where nobody is dressing for the male gaze. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it looks beautiful. It is a beautiful line, but it's not emphasizing her boobs or her hips or her ass. It's yeah. just gorgeous. Everything is covered and the materials are allowed to kind of speak for themselves and Mm -hmm. even the fact that the fancy material is the lining not the exterior fabric um I mean first of all that from a monetary standpoint that means that she had the money to spend (laughs) on that (laughs) being a lining um but I also just love that it allows her to be more subtle which speaks so much to Swan's character she's Mm -hmm. not a person of big flashy steps and gestures she's always the the one who's got the the 10,000 plots running (laughs) yeah yeah I I I love this dress. This mm-hmm. her other outfit is a statement dress. That's the one that I would see. I would imagine will be at conventions. This mm-hmm. is my favorite outfit that she wears. I love it. I love it. She's she's at home in herself. She's at home in being the Amerlin. She's not afraid to be herself while being the Amerlin. And when mm-hmm. you think about the comparison to the other Amerlins that we see in the books, yeah who are not comfortable at all in their roles, who are not secure. I I feel like it's a power statement, honestly. She doesn't need to dress up for anybody. (laughs) It's interesting. She's more, I mean, she's not completely symmetrical, but she is actually more symmetrical than most of the people we've seen. She's got her buttons on the side, but like this dress is fairly. This is the mm -hmm. only asymmetrical piece, part of it. Everything else is symmetrical. The Amerlin outfit the throne outfit is also very symmetrical now that I think about it but she's the I'm keeping everything in balance (laughs) yeah I with the force of my will everything Mm -hmm. will be kept in balance but also we know that like the things that she's doing to try to force artificial balance are going to be her downfall yes Yes. it's all gonna blow up in her face (laughs) oh my swan gowan (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> side swipe at Gallon for no reason whatsoever. You know He's the got- show is going to make us love him, right? <laughs> oh, don't. No, no, no. <laughs> do not do that to it's me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just go I with it. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, I even like Leandrin in the show. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, I never hate. knew persimmons could be so terrifying. And yet. No, they are in season. Sorry, I just, I just love this dress. Again, oh, I was that a like... little flash of her stomach? That's interesting. Yes. That's like a top and a. It is. Oh, so that's like a top and a skirt. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Huh. I didn't even notice that until just now. That's it. You're right. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. It makes I... me think it's something she would have worn as a tyrant. And hmm. I'm curious to see if we see this aesthetic continue when we get to tear. Oh, that's yeah. That Especially, I wonder if like the is that paisley that's inside the sleeves. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder. Like, I know that they have a a, a master garment list. I'd be interested in this paisley. No, I think paisley is like the ice to die in general, isn't it? Uh, it's one of the ice to die patterns for sure. But that one is more of like a paisley brocade, and a lot mm-hmm. of the ice to die fabrics they were creating them with screen printing. So. This could be Tyron, or it could just be a really cool fabric that they had yeah. enough of to put the, in the sleeves. Right. <laughs> I do think happens it's interesting too. that she's in gold yeah. and that Nynaeve's thing looks so much the same color as hers right here. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're definitely mirroring each other a bit, in, in color anyway. Which is oh. also an interesting fake out because at this point, if you haven't read the books, you have no idea who could possibly become an Amerlin. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we did have the whole little literal fake out where she's like, strongest channeler in a thousand yeah. years. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my Sorry, favorite Wendy. moments. <laughs> yes. Oh, that whole that. interaction is He's gold. so excited. Oh, my it's... poor baby. I love her. That oh. whole scene is so perfect, starting from Moraine sassing them. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. continuing all the way through. Uh, Swan Sanche waits for exactly one woman, and it's not it's you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that conversation. Um, I mean, you all know my favorite costume worn by Swan. I believe okay, Swan changes clothes four times, and Moraine changes clothes a lot. Uh, so what were your favorite costumes worn by them? You know mine for Swan, for Moraine... It might be the pillowcase. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, the blight pants. Blight pants are also pretty com- comfortable. Oh, but not in the blight. Anyway, let me know yours in the comments below. and uh, Or just in general, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my content and you want to support me, uh, I do have a Patreon. It will be linked in the description below. I say this every single time, but I mean it every single time. My patrons, I I could not possibly be more grateful to you. I, Your support means more to me. And like honestly helps me more than you can possibly know. So thank you so, so much. And uh, with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!